fever, cough, and shortness of breath are not the only symptoms of corona. The disease can also cause a complete economic shutdown, depression, and suicide. That's how a shop owner recently lost his life in Israel. Hello and welcome to Inside Israel. I'm Maria Mazacher. The coronavirus pandemic in Israel has exposed both fiscal and monetary failures. The international credit agency Moody has even lowered Israel's economic outlook. This next package will tell you what you need to know. According to the latest figures by the Israeli Employment Service, as of the number of unemployed workers in Israel since the beginning of the coronavirus crisis, there is 11,250,000. That is more than 27% unemployment. This is actually unprecedented in Israel's 72-year-old history since it was incepted onto Palestinian lands in 1948. This shocked many nations in Europe and the OECD, exposing the fragility of the Israeli economy. The result? The Israeli regime is now paying stipends to salaried workers only. The tens of thousands of self-employed workers, however, will not get anything. This will further put a strain on Israel's budget deficit. Those who have been impacted by the economic situation in Israel have been holding demonstrations, voicing their anger and pleading with the Israeli regime to help them. According to reports, students still had to pay tuition and dormitory fees despite not being able to attend classes and not staying at students' dorms. This was noted by the international credit agency Moody's. It decided to cut Israel's outlook to stable from positive. It cited the regime's widening budget deficit, now amplified by the coronavirus pandemic, and a more tense political environment. Moody's forecasted that the Israeli regime's debt burden will reach around 72% of gross domestic product by the end of this year. Israel is facing the biggest unemployment crisis in its entire 72 years of existence. Of the over 8.6 million Israeli men and women, more than 1,100,000 are now unemployed. But is the coronavirus pandemic single-handedly responsible for this crisis? Or are there other factors that contribute to this huge influx in joblessness? The following case study will delve deeper into this crisis. Stay tuned. I think that the government uh, really uh, was uh, uh, shocked by the uh, environment that was happening here and the de decision to let 12 billion shekel to allow people to go unpaid leave and the government going to pay for them. It's a lot of money, so a lot of companies actually decided to uh, send their people to, be, to unpaid leave and on the expenses of the government. It's a lot of money, and I think that a lot of the strong companies and strong offices in Israel took advantage of it, and I think it's a failure. But I think now 
we are going to have much higher poverty, mainly among uh, uh, women and Arabs and uh, young people. Those are the most, uh, uh, I would say, vulnerable uh, uh, entities, uh, vulnerable people who are going to, uh, to be hurt. Uh, because we are going to see a lot of offices and companies and industries uh, going to fire people or to cut their uh, wage and get their salaries. And uh, the, I would say the uh, fat cats, that's for the, going to be even uh, uh, stronger. And unfortunately, I'm going to see a poverty in Israel. It's not going to be seen immediately this year, but uh, when things are going to settle down, are you going to see a lot of unemployment and uh, poverty next year? And this is again, it will take years to, to, to the government to help them to recover. It didn't, it didn't uh, it just said that it's not going to be positive, it's going to be, so we are still have a double A minus uh, 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 rate, which is quite high. But of course, once we are going to have, uh, uh, I would say between uh, eight, nine, even 10% uh, deficit uh, as percentage of GDP is going to hurt uh, Israel. And if the government uh, wouldn't uh, going to, uh, to increase taxes, let's say uh, next year, 2021, 2022, and to collect money and to do and to cut their budget, uh, we will be uh, the, the, our rate is going to be uh, cut down. It is very very dangerous. And meanwhile, the government just spread money like no to, there is no tomorrow. Uh, and uh, what I like in Germany, the, the, the Chancellor and the Minister of Finance said, we are, are going to give you a lot of money today, but bear in mind, we are going to collect the money later on when the, we are going to have a recovery. Here, they haven't uh, said it, and they haven't said it, and uh, this is a, uh, quite a problem. I think that we will have to raise taxes. Oh, that's a very hard question. Yeah, the, the small business and medium business are going to be in problem. Even the government uh, going to help them, and the government has managed to help them, and the government had them to postpone the, their payments, the, to the city tax and the water, electricity, and the government actually gave them some money, a few thousand shekel, like 4,000, 8,000 shekel. Of course, this is not enough. And uh, I think that we're going to see a lot of uh, bankruptcies. We're going to see a lot of people uh, out of uh, jobs, out of business. And we are going to see a lot of problems, mainly to the lower and the medium uh, classes. They are going to be in uh, trouble. Unfortunately, I uh, am afraid that the government helped. Meanwhile, has uh, the government help uh, mainly the strongest, uh, uh, I would say, companies, and the society rather than the poor people. The poor people will be in a problem and we will see a lot of uh, social problems uh, within the family, within the community. Alec Maurer, the publisher of Megafon News, is an activist. He joins us from the Israeli capital, Tel Aviv. Good to have you with us, Mr. Maurer. Now, what can you tell us about the current economic situation in Israel? I do, I do, I can see it. But I don't know what's going to happen in the next months. I really don't know because the, the economy is breaking down. The, um, the Israeli pocket is not so, the Israeli, Israeli pocket, the national pocket, we don't have enough full of money for that. I mean, they, they, the strong economy in Israel, we have a strong economy. We had a strong economy. And it will take time. It will take time and it will be, it will be different. And uh, we should see what it's going to be because there are a lot of business that are not going to, going, to, going, to, going, to be, going to be back to work. And most of them will going to, going to close forever. Meaning that hundreds of thousands of people will not be able to go to back to work. Means there will be a lot of un unemployed. So we're going to have a lot of tough time in the next couple of months, I'm sure of that. Now, Israel was hit very hard economically because of the coronavirus lockdown. 
But what were the underlying factors that made the economy so fragile? Well, the problem is uh, the prime minister, of course. The prime minister, you have to understand, the prime minister, the Israeli prime minister, has his trial, is going to trial at the 24th of this month. He did everything he could, everything he could to uh, to provide it, to delay it. He, do, he did anything. And uh, he blamed the court and he blamed the, the police and he blamed the, he blamed the whole world except himself. But he knows the truth. And uh, it's really damaged the way we can deal with the coronavirus, of course, because of that. Because uh, there is no government for over a year. We had three times elections. He didn't want to go out. He didn't want you to get out of the political. He wanted to stay there in Barfur. Barfur this is his resident, a residence, Jerusalem. He didn't want to get out of Barfur. He didn't want to get uh, to, to leave the, the leader position. He wanted to stay as government. He said that the people demand him. And yes, yes, we can say that um, more than more than uh, two million, two million million three hundred thousand people. Vote for him. Voted for not for him, but but for for the parties that support him. Well, Israelis are growing desperate, and we've already witnessed that the situation can lead to suicide. So, what options do Israelis have now? There are a couple hundred thousand people that are protest against the Israeli prime minister. Uh, not not against the 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 the, 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 the situation of the virus corona. No. There are people that demand that he will be tell the listen to just listen. We call him they call him not Prime Minister, Crime Minister, we see. Crime Minister. So they are, they are, they are against him. Against this situation. They wanted him to say listen go to the judge, go to the to to, to the, the courthouse. You have a lot of to do, a lot of things to do there. Defend yourself over there, and if you will be uh, in the end of it, up to you. But if the end of it will not be convicted, you can go back to the politics. But if you will be, nothing we can do about it. But still, you can't run government and your trial. And he says he can. And the Israeli law says that until there is no final, um, final, final decision by the court, Israeli court, um, it's gonna, you can be you can be prime minister. You can be you can't be a minister. It's, it's, it's stupid as it is. You can't be a minister. You can't be. But you can be. Prime Minister, Prime Minister, and to run, to run, to run the government. And what do you expect in the short and long terms for the Israeli economy during this financial crisis? Well, the richest people will grow. The richer people will be more richer. The poor people will be more, more poor. The middle class will break down to the poor class, to the, to the, to the, the low class. But... Um, most of the people, most of the richest people, um, it's the, let's say it's about 10% of the population in Israel. And uh, some families that are holding the economy by their hands, I mean factories, etc., etc., um, they will be over the, 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 the corona and they will, will supply works, and etc., etc. But the poor people and the middle class people, they are the real economy in Israel. They are the real economy. The, the real economy is the people, the, is the nation. But those people will be in a lot of troubles. A lot of trouble because they will have, to, right now, they are, they are loaning money from the bank 
or from friends, they have to pay it back. Not this month, next month. Not that month, the next couple of months. But we have to pay it. And they won't have the money. We're going to have a lot of problem. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us, Mr. Maurer. That was Alec Maurer, an activist and the publisher of Megafon News from Tel Aviv. Now, there's a lot more to come on the economic aftermath of the epidemic in Israel. Stay tuned. Now, how are Israelis managing with the current state of economy? What do they think of the future? Are they hopeful that the regime will improve the economic situation? What about those who have lost their jobs? We asked Israelis these questions and more in the capital Tel Aviv, and here's what they told us. أنا هنا كما كما على كل أزرق يا مدينة ما تصاب كل كلي كشيء أما خريم لا زليم إن هاي نخشاف بوب خنو تبقديم ما خريم مقويم مود وأنا شيم لو عفديم ما لقيت لك يعني زي ما تصاب كيام شبيها مبخنا كل كلي بيت بيت أخ فريق أربيار من أخذ كل كليت. أتى عفيت كريجا أو بعد؟ لا عشان لا مو طال. لا مو طال عشان. أوكي. كين. وعم شراء عزراء بالمشو؟ كين. كين عزرو. كل كل كبوت كل شلا مشلا. أزمان مشلمين مسيم كل أزمان مشلمين بتوح لأمي مشلمين مشلمين مشلمين. هي عزمة شنو كبيل؟ لا ما شو لو كيبان؟ أنا بد لا. לא, אין לי תיק במשרד רווחה, ולא ידוע עליי שום דבר, אף אחד לא, לא קיבלתי, לא התייחס לי לגמרי. אני יודעת שהכל לקחו וזה, אבל אני לא. את האמת, מכה קשה, אני עובד בתחום התיירות, אני שף של מלון שמתעסק בתיירים. קיבלנו מכה קשה, אנחנו הראשונים שסגרנו, והאחרונים שנפתח. אישי זה מבאס שאי אפשר לצאת לאף מקום. שיצאנו לחל"ת. אני במקרה לא, אבל בעלי כן. זה מבאס, מצב לא נעים, לא קל, אבל נקווה שנהיה כבר אחרי זה, כבר הגיע הזמן. As we learned earlier, the coronavirus pandemic has worsened the already stressful fiscal and monetary situation in Israel. But the majority of the damage was done due to the political deadlock. And now for Israelis, the future is bleak. Israel already started to open up schools and businesses. The pressure is too much, and the regime is left with no choice, as the economic consequences of not doing so are damaging. Although the Israeli economy began to spiral out of control when the coronavirus pandemic hit there, it was already showing signs of distress due to the political deadlock there. Israel had no budget for one year, and the budget deficit was already climbing, forcing the foreign ministry to shut down in 2019. The coronavirus exposed the Israeli economy's hardship, obstacles, challenges, and shortcomings of Israeli monetary and fiscal policy on the economy. According to the credit ratings agency Moody's, Israel's increasingly polarized politics, evidenced by the three elections over 2019 and 2020, was making it difficult to be governed effectively. In fact, according to Moody's, the new unity cabinet does not improve the the situation and the domestic political environment is expected to stay the same. It also predicts no major shift in Israeli domestic policy. Furthermore, Moody states that there remains a significant risk of renewed political stalemate and a more fractured political environment than possibly even in previous times. The financial situation is keeping Israel's at unease. At least one person has committed suicide due to the financial stress. A shop owner has killed himself by jumping off a house. Merchants also clashed with Israeli police for the continued lockdown that has hampered their business. Anti-Zionist activist Duff Shapira joins us from the U.S. 
Good to have you with us, Mr. Shapira. Now, what parts of the Israeli society do you think are paying the heaviest price when it comes to the coronavirus pandemic? Yeah, they are the biggest uh, victims of the coronavirus. Um, airplanes came with Orthodox Jews from Brooklyn, New York, from the United States. Um, one airplane brought 65 or 64 Orthodox Jews from New York, and all the 65 were um, um, infected with the virus. So some people think that they brought to Israel so they can get buried in Israel, but I don't know what the truth is. But I know that the Orthodox Jews in Israel and in in the New York State are a very big victims of that virus. How many of them? How many of them died? I don't know. Because um, I know that the death of from the virus is very, very, very much related to their age. And they said that most of the people that died from the virus, they had one foot in the grave anyway. Now, what solutions is Israel hoping to find for this coronavirus-induced crisis? Well, Israel is not looking apparently for any solution for the, uh, for the coronavirus uh, pandemic. They are just floating there and doing what, in other words, any crisis they are an opportunity um, to create something new or, or, or to manipulate something or uh, to take advantage of it. And I think um, most government, this is what they are looking for. How can we take advantage of this crisis? Well, you did mention that the problem is not just Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. So what do you think the problem is? Yes, but Netanyahu is not the problem. The problem is Zionism and the fact that Israel is still declared the state of the Jews, which is, which is uh, racism. It's, it's pure racism. Well, thank you for that, Mr. Shapira. That was anti-Zionist author Dev Shapira from the U.S. It's now time to look at the news that's making the press in Israel. Haaretz, it's not only the economic crisis that Israel is afraid of. The annexation of occupied Palestinian territories could cause Palestinian streets to explode. The combination of Israel's annexation plans and the economic difficulties the Palestinian territories are experiencing due to the pandemic could prove to be an explosive mix in the occupied West Bank. The Jerusalem Post. Food prices in Israel soar as prices force merchants to sell their products at prices much higher than those prior to the pandemic. Vinet. Israeli forces arrest more than 300 ultra-Orthodox men despite coronavirus regulations. Hundreds of ultra-Orthodox men broke into the sacred compound at Mount Miran in northern Israel. Israeli forces clashed with them, arresting hundreds. The Times of Israel Israel weighs suspending the broadcast license of a U.S.-based Hebrew language missionary channel. Israel's media watchdog has launched an investigation into a U.S.-based evangelical network following allegations that its programming is promoting conversion to Christianity. Today we discussed Israel's economic situation following the corona pandemic lockdown. We work closely with a team of experts inside and outside Israel to bring you this weekly program. But the picture we provide can be far more wholesome with your personal stories included. So get on PressTV.com and tell us about your individual experience. Until next time and a fresh episode of Inside Israel, it's goodbye for now.